Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, December 28th, and Cinnamon is here with me, so I have it a little farther back so you can see her. <laughs> She's um, doing well. We had some trouble with her um, food recently, but um, we got her on some new food and she's doing doing much better. She's 17, so she's an old kitty. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this is a cross-stitching update, not a cat update. Um, I don't have a whole lot of significant progress to show you this week, but I do have a little bit and some plants and a little bit of Christmas goodies. Um, I received a few things stitchy wise for Christmas, and so I thought I'd share that with you too. So let's get going. Um, first off, I got a, I won a giveaway on um, count twice, stitch once. Um, Connie and Marlena, is that how you say your name? So I got this kit, which I, entered the drawing for, I think it's the D stash. Um, they just didn't want it anymore. Um, it just says cat. <laughs> it's by Artiste. But I thought my daughter might like this. So I thought that was cute. And my sister's old cat looks a lot like this. So potentially my daughter could stitch it for her aunt and that would be fun. Something useful to do with it when she's done with it. So that's a full kit. It comes with 14 count oatmeal, Ada, and some threads and so yeah, that's fun. So yay. And and then for Christmas, I I had asked for a few buttons and beads kits by Mill Hill because I have the one kit of the butterfly, um, which I should have brought to show you. But that one is like half done. And then I got another kit from Colette, the highway stitcher, when she visited last year, and I thought Okay, now I have two. <laughs> what should I do with these? And then I saw, um, oh, Calico, what's your name? I'm running out of, I'm missing names. Christine. Christine over, at, I think she, Calico, Calico Wednesday on Instagram or here, she might just be Calico on Instagram, but she loves to do Mill Hill kits and she was talking about a frame that she found at Michael's at least that was that she you could switch out the finished buttons and beads kits very easily in a five by five frame. And I thought that's that's giving me an idea. <laughs> so I went ahead and worked up a tentative um, thoughts of one Mill Hill kit per month. So I'll do 12 in total and then I can switch them out like my other seasonal things. So I just put a few kits on my list for Christmas because I, some of them, I don't want to put everything on there and then I'd just be overwhelmed by all of them, but I'll put a few on every year and, um, slowly, <laughs> slowly but surely work my way through them. So, and I also put on a, an actual Mill Hill frame and I got that for my mother-in-law. And so this is a six by six, not five by five, a six by six frame. And it's meant for these kits. So this is one kit I got from my husband. And this one's called Hummingbird. So this one will be for one of the months. I can't remember. I I put them in on my Excel sheet which month they'll be for. So the they all come with the perforated paper that's cut, you know, exactly to fit in these frames. And so I'll just put it, put it in there and switch it out. So it'll be super easy. So these come with beads and floss and a little button as well. This one has a bee button. And my mother-in-law got me two. The one that was in the package with the frame was this one, a winter tree one with a little bunny button. This one's called Winter Wonderland. And um, I almost started this while I was there um, on Christmas morning because people were doing various things. The kids were playing games with their cousins and I didn't have much to do. So I figured, well, why don't I just start this kit? I've got everything I need. So I went ahead and like, I, I drew on the back of the perforated paper and I started taking, separating the colors into bundles. So it was all ready to go and then it was time to leave. <laughs> so I didn't actually put in a, a single stitch, but it's almost ready to start. And she also wrapped up, um, oh, this one was actually in my stocking from my mother-in-law. So 
Moonlit Kitties. That'll be the one for October. Because as you can see, I do love my kitties. <laughs> they have another cat one that I was debating back and forth, and it has one cat with a more pink moon silhouette. Um, and it was a hard choice, but I think I went with this one eventually because it's more... The orange tone in it is more more Halloween-y to me and not more October-y than the pink one was. So the pink one is maybe more me as far as my, the colors I like to use and stitch with, but this one is more appropriate for October, I think. And I do like it. So I went ahead and got that one. So I have a few more that I'll probably add to my wish list now. You can, I can, I just have these from Amazon because they're the about the same price as they would be anywhere else on one, two, three stitch or whatnot. And so it's easier for family members to buy them on Amazon. So I just figured I'll just put them on there um, and be more likely to get them. <laughs> so my plan going forward into the new year, I'm gonna dovetail on the idea that Charlene has over on the Witchy Stitchers here on Floss, Floss Tube. She um, has a Floss Tube with her daughter, Morgan, and she does Mill Hill Mondays. So I don't know how many she has going, but she rotates through hers, I believe, on, and every Monday she'll work on it. I don't know exactly how many, if she does other things as well on that day, or if it's just like a few stitches and then she'll move on to something else. I think she's planning to do a certain number of stitches every time she works on them now to, to try to make sure they get done. I'm thinking I'll probably do one at a time. So for now, not today, I'll start this in the new year, I think, but I'm, I'll start with the butterfly kit I already have going and finish that. I'll work on it a little bit every Monday um, and it'll, it will be my, my bonus piece, I guess. I decided to, to not work on quick stitch iris on Mondays and instead beef up the stitch count. In January, I'll need to do 65 stitches a day, except for the month, you know, if I take the Mondays out instead of 60 stitches a day. 65 stitches a day is easier to say, so I like that too. <laughs> because 60 stitches a day is a tongue twister. So I will work on quick stitch iris for 65 stitches a day, except for Mondays. And then on Monday, I will put in maybe like one length of thread or one color or one, like a 30 minute chunk or whatever seems to be a nice amount. I'm not gonna count my stitches on those. Um, so I'll just figure out what works best for, for that. But I'll work on those every Monday. And when I finish the the butterfly one, I'll move on to the next one. So I don't know which one I'll do next. It may be maybe this one because it's already partially um, organized to, to get that going. So and that only has six colors in that white one. So the, the trees, the snowy trees. Oops, watch out, kitty, don't fall off. So yeah, so I'm excited about that. I love those kits and I also have a little, um, one ornament that's a sparkly snowflake most a lot of be bugle beads on it and things like that and I'll I may throw that in, in at some point too to do on a Monday rotation as well just to get an ornament done before next Christmas because I think that would be fun to do also so look for that in the new year which will be next Monday I'll start working on that I could start that today but I didn't bring it to show you and I guess I could still do it I guess we'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling later on if I feel like pulling that out and starting my Mill Hill Mondays today or if I'll just wait for the new year to start fresh. My travel stitching, quote unquote, mostly TV stitching now, is my temperature tree, which is almost done. Just a few more leaves. Um, this is the, the one I've been doing this past year and I'm excited about it. It's looking really good. I'll work on my temperature typography starting in January. So that'll be fun too. Here is where I'm at now. This is on 28 count light blue even weave by Artiste, which you can find at Hobby Lobby and it's um, one over one full crosses. I am down here, put in all these leaves under here. And so I just have a few more to go around this little branch and it's done. So 
so that's exciting. Mostly cooler colors again. I had one color that w went up to, into 80, and the, but then back down to 57. So it's actually raining today, so it's probably going to be a cooler, a cooler day today in, in the 50s or 60s probably. Um, last night around midnight, we had a huge thunderstorm. We hadn't quite gone to bed yet, and it was lightning and really loud, long thunder and possibly even hail. It was pretty loud rain occasionally, but that was kind of cool. <laughs> and then it's continued to rain um, lightly, not that, not that dramatically throughout the day so far today. So winter is here in Southern California. That's the best we can do. <laughs> All right. So I've also worked a little bit on my prim stitch series. Home and Hearth, which is number six. This is by the Fat Quarter Shop. It's a series and I'm doing the whole thing to eventually make into a doll quilt for my daughter. So this is how far I've gotten this week. Not a lot, but I did a little bit more on that house. I have a few more rows of this color and then I can work on the, uh, the, other, the rest of the house. This is 25 count prim vintage cloth by Lori Holt and I'm doing it one over one. And I have been playing with specialty stitches to change some of it into specialty stitches, but I haven't decided 100% what I'm gonna do. Um, so far, I'm just doing cross stitches. It's taking a long time, but it's kind of mindless too. So it's it can be good. So I'm just going with that. You still can't see Kitty. She's still She's still down here. Um, I guess I could show you my quick stitch iris. I didn't work on it a lot this week. I worked on it Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, but then the rest of the week I didn't. So I've got some love, but, and on Tuesday I worked on it quite a bit because I was talking with my sister on the phone and was working on that one and didn't feel like switching. I figured I... I was in an easy spot, so I just figured I'd just keep filling in, filling in, filling in, and got 144 stitches that day. So that was great. So that kind of made up for not getting to it later in the week. So this is the one I'm talking about. I'm working on this every day. I'm hoping to finish it next year as part of the 21,000 stitches in 2021 in Full Coverage Fanatics. I don't have that many stitches left, so I will be finishing it and then moving on to waterfall in Yosemite for the rest of the 21,000 stitches. So here is where it's at now. And this is 25 count, one over one, full crosses. And I think I worked on like background stuff over here, which is why it was easy to just go for it on that one day. Lots of gray. So that's where I'm at now. And I will keep pulling this out every day, except for Mondays. And I don't know if, if I'll start that today or not. Um, yeah, I don't know. Guess we'll see how I feel later <laughs> when I actually get to my stitching time. I also want to read a little bit more today than usual because I'm Trying to hit my goal, I made a goal, a reading goal of 20 books in the year 2020 because it just worked really well to do that. And I'm at 18 now and I have one that's close to being finished. So I'm not worried about that, but I have a second one I was reading during my husband's lunch break and it's not going to get done in time. So I have joined a Little House on the Prairie cross-stitching group, which is a really small closed group. And they're starting with the first book. Um, we could start reading it this week, so I think I'm going to try to get that one read before the end of the year to count for my 20 books goal. So, because it's a short children's book, so I'm hoping I can get it done really quick. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of hoping to get some more reading done in the next few days too. Which may impact my stitching, but maybe not. So what I worked on this week, mainly, is this one. I had my new start of Winter Floral Cross by, this is a Janland kit, but it is by the Cooler Design Studio. Um, Nancy Rossi is the designer. You can find all, all of them. 
either on CoolerDesignStudio.com or Everything Cross Stitch or even 123 Stitch. You can find prints and PDFs of this. No more kits. I don't think they make the kits anymore. But I got all the symbols and this is a... That was their bonus card that I wrote on like that. But most of them came like with the numbers, these numbers, which mean absolutely nothing other than to tell you where the color is located. I just put symbols for most of those. So these are really pretty colors. Um, the, the cover picture is a fairly warm rendering of the picture, but the way these colors play on the fabric, it's actually more cool tones, which I actually like better. So that's nice to see. Um, it's a ni nice light mint fabric and the colors look really pretty. Sorry, kitty, did I bug you? So here's my start. This is 14 count light green Ada that came with the kit. And here's where I got to. Yay! I started in the middle and worked my way up. This is part of a poinsettia. This is like the lightest shade in the poinsettia and the lightest shade in a pine cone and then some more holly colors. And then I got all the way to the tippity top and did one length of back stitching thread, which is very similar to the color of the fabric, but um, it shows up better in the camera actually than it does in real life. It's really faint, but it's meant to be the background. So, and it actually has a decent border. It's like a three inch border, which is kind of surprising. Um, maybe they were more generous with their kit fabric back in the day because it's a pretty old kit. I've had it for a while. So that's exciting too. Get started on all four crosses I started this year. On each one was started on the day, first day of the season here in the Northern Hemisphere. So I'm excited about that, to have them all started. And then this coming year, I'll try to pull them out periodically during their season and get a little bit more work on them. And then if I also have various prompts that have to do with seasons or, you know, I could pull them out for that too. The other thing I worked on some was my heirloom nativity sampler. This one is by the Victoria sampler and I'm working here in the wise man scene and I didn't get a lot done. I was kind of not feeling stitching at all. I kind of felt like doing other things or just playing on my phone or I did some, I did a dot to dot page. I did a paint by sticker page. I did some other, did some planning. So there were some times where it was just like, mm, I don't feel like stitching. But then once I pulled it out and got going, I finally kind of um, got a little bit of interest going in this piece again, but nowhere near what I wanted to do before the end of this year, but that's okay. I had a lot of other things that were distracting me this year. But here is where it's at now compared to last time. This is on 32 count linen in dove gray. I believe it's by MCG Textiles, so it's slightly uneven, lots of slubs, um, but it still still works and the, and the white pops. I did, didn't mention last time, but I did convert all of this to DMC, except for the Gloriana. There's a dark green Gloriana and then the multicolored Gloriana, that, which you can see in some of these specialty stitches. So I kept those and I think General Art Sable, which is used in the brown area, everything else that was intended to be NPI solid colored silks, I'm, I converted to DMC. So this is B5200 because I wanted to make sure it popped on the fabric and I think it does. So here's a close up of the wise man scene. I went ahead and finished out the brown, which gave me some skin tones and some camel and the little seat that this guy is sitting on right here and this, this tree trunk over here. And then I did some black and some blue. And then I came over here and did some green. And then I did some white, one length of white so that I could backstitch this tree. Cause I love the little, uh, the little pine needles and stuff. Oh, and I did the star, which is in um, Krynik, it sparkles. So there'll be some more, the next thing I do will be like the snowflakes in the sky and then the rest of the colors and things in here. So it's, it's progress, but it's not nearly as much as I could have done as if I actually like sat down and worked on it for a couple hours every day, which I could have done. I just didn't, didn't want to. <laughs> and that's okay. There's a time and a place for stitching. And sometimes you just feel like doing other things. So 
I'm okay with that. But I love that piece. I will will come back to it. It's it's one of my I think I have 65 projects now started, which is a little ridiculous, but it's still fun. So, going forward into this week, my plans are a little fluid, so I don't have a whole lot like structured. There's still still no um challenges this week. Um necessarily. I think most challenges are starting either on the first or next week in the various groups that I'm that I'm in. So um my so I'll just be doing my own thing this week, which is kind of nice. Starting on today, my main piece I'm going to work on it, which I I forgot to bring the cover picture, but this is my letter E fairy, which I showed you last time and I will be trying to finish it. Because this is the one thing I did want to make sure I finished this year. And I don't think it'll take me that long to do. So here's where I'm at now. This is on the called for fabric, which is 32 count water lily linen. And it's a nice soft light green. I have on my needle here, you can see through the fabric, um, this dark gray. So I'm outlining some of the E and then I'll do these curly cues and then I have beads and that's all I have left. So this is really close to a finish. I, I'm giving it two days, but I'll work on it till it's done. One, two, three, however long it takes. And, and I'll work on the next one on the fifth, I believe, is when I'm planning to start the next one for my next piece. I think I have that in here for Yeah. Oh, my 2020 or my January plans are like packed. <laughs> I'll get to that at the end. So when that's done, I had a few options. What should I work on for the rest of the year? And so I thought about, I could pull out Waterfall in Yosemite and work on the sky, but I'm not really feeling it. And because my January plans are so full, because of the bingo and all the different projects I want to get to for Full Coverage Fanatics bingo in January, um, I thought, why don't I have my new start that I was thinking of doing in January that is not technically going to be full coverage anymore. I'll do that as soon as I finish Letter E Fairy. So that's, I think, what I'm going to do because I'm just really excited about starting things right now. So what I'm talking about is my new Hade TN books, which I bought um, last week. Um, yeah, so I was gonna do this for the bingo prompt, hot beverage, because nothing I had had a hot beverage in it, and I wanted to get a blackout. But the more I was thinking about it, the more I knew I really didn't wanna do this background, and it looks like it'll be fairly easy to take the background out, because it's a fairly crisp edge along everything except for this steam at the top that would be the only tricky part and so i thought you know i'll just do it i'll do the whole background i want to do it on 40 count i have 40 count fabric i went to cut my fabric after i filmed my video last week and my 40 count even weave that i have is not big enough for this piece so then i cut a piece of 28 count but i was just not feeling it i didn't want it that big i really wanted it on 40 count one over one and then i decided you know what life's too short to stitch background. <laughs> I really want it on 40 count. Let's go see how big this piece is I got from Amy Gable Stitcher. That's mottled brown and it's on 40 count. And it's the perfect size. So I said, well, I think I have to. So I'm going to do it on this fabric oriented like this because of this um, dark patch up here in the top middle, because this is where the steam will be. And I decided I'm just gonna, I went into Pattern Keeper last night and started playing around. Um, and the steam is, you can still get a, a good play of the steam with just the white stitches. The other colors of the steam are in the background and other, other places, so it'll be awkward if I try to do those. So I'll just do white in the steam and everything else, I'll just take the background off 
and do it on this. And it will no longer be a full coverage piece, so I can't use it for my bingo, but it's gonna be fun and I'm excited. So I'm gonna do this one over one, full uh, half cross on 40 count. This is Vertil uh, Even Weave. Let me get the sticker here. It's by Silk Weaver and it's called Days Gone By. So I put the little sticker on my cover page here so I remember what it is and I'm excited. So that will hopefully be started this week when the letter E fairy is finished. And right now I also have this next to my light blue even weave that I'm gonna do for, it's a pale blue, it's not really light blue, it's pale blue. Um, I'm gonna do typography, temperature typography on that. So it's it's quite a bit smaller than the 40 count, than, than the Hade will be. But this is what I'm gonna do, my, um, my new temperature piece will be on that. And I have another new start that I'll do on the first because it's New Year's Day, so you have to have a new start. So I went ahead and signed up for the, the Cross Stitch Studios Mystery Sal, which has a wildlife theme. And I decided, which I think I mentioned last week, I decided to go ahead and live on the wild side and try it with this light green linen that I was, or light green even weave that was um, gifted to me. It's slightly mottled, but it's really, a, it's a pale green. I'm gonna try it one over one, one strand half stitch on this light green. And I think it will work. I will put a picture in a, of a finish that I had several years ago that I did one over one half stitches on 32. I wasn't 100% happy with it, but that finish had a lot of black on white and it was actually white linen. So it wasn't even even weave, probably MCG textiles linen. Cause that's just what I did back then. If I had it, I used it. Um, I too cheap to <laughs> worry about buying anything else. And so that is like the worst possible coverage situation black on white. So if this is a wildlife themed prompt on light green, I think I'll have a lot better coverage. It won't be so extreme. Seeing a little bit of the fabric show through won't be as detrimental to the piece. So I think I'm going to just go for it and do one over one half stitches on 32 count on this light green fabric. And I'm very excited to start that. I am giving it four days in a row, the first, second, third, and fourth. And for my bingo, I decided, for the Full Coverage Fanatics bingo, I decided to kind of hone in on a few projects, not try to get to every project I have. And so some projects have, that project has four days, Stitching Shelf has seven days, a full a full week. And the some other ones have one or two days per um, project. I'm gonna do one prompt per day. So if that makes any sense. I think I'm just not making any sense. Here's the bingo board. There's 25 squares. And I'm gonna do a different, each day, each, each block will be one day. So I have stitching shelf, for example, on here seven times. So I'm gonna give it a whole week and each day I will do before and after pictures for a particular prompt. And on that piece in particular, which will be really fun, because I've stitched cross country over the whole thing, I'm gonna try to stitch on the particular item in the prompt. So I have one is, I'm gonna go ahead and do hot, hot beverage for that one because there is a bottle of wine and a glass of wine there. And you can have mold wine, which is hot or warm. And so there's a few hot, hot wine beverages I was unaware of and thank, Thank you to the, the people on the Full Coverage Fanatics Facebook group for giving me those suggestions. So it's the only beverage I have in my full coverage. I'm going to go with it. Um, so that day I'll work on the little section with the wine bottle for that day. Um, stitching shelf designed with words or books. I'll work on a book spine for that one. Um, wolves or dogs. I'll work on a dog because there's a two or three different dogs in there. One of them has already started, so I could work on that golden retriever I've already started. There's another dog, at least one other dog, in the design I could look for too. 
Um, design with doors. There's some doors up in the top corner that are not finished. I could work on some doors. Winter scene, I could work on somewhere in the winter, like the little snowman at the bottom. And evergreen trees. There's also some Christmas trees over by the snowman. I could work on those actual trees. And the red BMC, there's some 321. I'll just pull out, do 321 wherever it is. So I think it's going to be so much fun. Each day I'll pick a prompt and focus on that actual area. And the other ones won't necessarily be like that specific because for example, April Fairy will be representing something with wings because there's butterflies in in the piece. I'm not working on the butterflies right now, but that's okay. So Stitching Shelf is the only one I'm gonna actually work on that item. Normally you don't have to get that specific, but I think it'll be fun to do it on that piece. So these are the ones I have earmarked throughout the week if or the month if you really care. But starting this coming week, the only one I'm doing um, before I see you again will be the Wildlife Mystery Cell. And I will even have one more day on it before I, um, when I come back to you, if I come back on Monday, which is the plan, I'll have one more day to do on that one. Um, so it won't be completely finished my rotation when I see you again. But that's kind of my plan. And there's there were four birthday challenges in Cross Stitch Township, which is another a closed cross stitching group on Facebook. And so for each of those, I'm trying to do um, something to go with their birthday. There's somebody on the 1st of January, Grace, there's a lady named Grace. We're doing her birthday start. She wants something with letters. My wildlife style probably doesn't have letters. Um, so I'll work on tea and books, the, which I'm gonna start hopefully this, this week. And I'll work on that for just enough time to give her a before and after of um, that picture to give her some some points or ballots in, in that group. And the next one is on the third, which is any whip. Not a new start. By Technically by the third, my wildlife style will not be a new start anymore. I will have worked on it for two days. So I'll have a before and after of a whip to show her for that one. On the ninth is an, a lady named Stephanie. She wants something with flowers, us, us to work on something with flowers. So that's the day I've earmarked to work on my quick stitch iris all day long. It won't be just 70, 65 stitches, it'll be the whole day. And then I also have that in my bingo for closest to a finish because it's closest to a finish. All my full coverage pieces. Um, let's see, oh yeah, there was one more birthday sale on this 19th that wants you to work on your oldest whip. So I'll pull out my antique shoe collection again for that one. Um, I guess I could share with you real quick the four prompts I'm going to be using my wildlife style for since that's coming up in this, this week. The first one is a new start. New start. I'll work on wildlife style. I'm also going to do, um, a design, designer or design name beginning with F or C. There, it's by the Cross Stitch Studio, so Cross starts with C. Designed with more than 21 colors, it has more than 21, and Stitcher's Choice, because I wanted to get a lot of, not a lot, but I wanted to give it another day to give it some more time, because it's, I, I don't want to get super far behind. I think it'd be fun to try to stay as caught up as possible. I have no expectations that I'll get the entire page done in four days, but we'll see. We'll see how far it goes. I don't know how much confetti will be in it. I'm really looking forward to it to see what it's going to be like. So I also have part of the, part of the planning that I did for choosing my whips in bingo was the bookshelf challenge in full coverage fanatics. They're going through, um, each month they'll have a theme of books. So January is the classics and they've chosen Pride and Prejudice, The Great Gatsby and Little Women as three classics. And they have stitch counts here for um, how many pages. It's 100, the amount of pages times 100 for stitches. I'm not gonna do the counting version. I'm just gonna do the theme. Some suggestions of their themes for this particular month are fancy ladies, 20th, roaring 20s, 19th century, 18th century, based on the different genres of these books. So the three projects I chose are La Soiree, Empress Eugenie, and The Stitcher's Retreat. And so those are ones that I chose to try to get to in my bingo as much as possible. So I'll show those to you real quick. 
So here's La Soiree, it's a golden kite. And I managed to, I, I think most of these I only am fitting in twice. So they'll get two days for two different bingo prompts. Yeah, La Soiree has two, Empress Eugenie has two, and Stitcher's Retreat has two. So Empress Eugenie is is this one. It's another golden kite. This matches the time period of Little Women, I think, because they've got lots of those big poofy dresses. Oh, and then this one, this one could work. There's a um, Cross Stitch Township monthly challenge that's got, that's based on movies and they're doing Gone with the Wind this, um, this month. And so their dresses look a lot like the Civil War era dresses. So I could use this one for that if I'm gonna do a thousand stitch challenge. I'd have to do two, 500 stitches each day I work on this. So I'm not sure if that's feasible or not. Um, the other thing I was thinking of is the stitching shelf um, project, which I could show you real quick in case you're wondering. Everybody's seen this one, but um, I'm working on it for a full seven days. So there's definitely, I'm definitely gonna get at least a thousand stitches on that one. Um, that's this one. And this one is books. So Gone with the Wind was a book. And I'm sure there's some ladies in here that have similar dresses to what they wore back then. Her, her outfit in particular looks like that. So I could probably make this work as well. So I'm not sure what I'll pick for that. Gone with the Wind prompt. What was the other one? Stitcher's Retreat. This one looked kind of like the 20s in the, the way their dresses are. So that's one I will do for a couple days as well throughout the month um, to fit the bookshelf challenge. So that was fun. And I, I did this planning several months ago. So I think it will be fine to just stick with this um, going forward and not have to re reinvent the wheel on those and just try to work those three full coverage pieces in to whatever other plans I have that, that month. That's my plan anyways. I don't think there's anything else um, that you really need to see. I, I think I will start the, the soda stitch pattern for my anniversary on the 10th. Anything this month, it's, it's really full. <laughs> I have all sorts of things. Every project that's not part of the bingo prompt is just getting one day because I had so many other things to do. So the bingo, bingo projects will get one day per prompt and everything else, like my family pieces, will get one day. Um, so I think that will work. It's gonna be a busy, busy month of lots of rotating. And the first little bit here will be very, um, will stay with just the one project, the, the mystery sal, because I have that for four days right at the beginning. But after that, it's gonna be rotating through. So you see lots of different things, so that should be fun. And total, um, well, if I start tea and books before the end of the year, technically there will only be three starts in January. Um, I didn't have room to fit in the winter tree that's the 11 count pre-printed pre kit. I would like to start that at some point, but I couldn't fit it in in January. So maybe I'll, I can fit it in in February sometime. Cause it would be fun to get that started and kind of have that on the go. and. Um, just to see what it's like. I'm really curious. So I like trying things that are new and different. So in cross stitching, <laughs> I don't know if I'm like that in other areas of life, but in cross stitching, it's fun. So I think for that, that's all I had to share with you today. I hope you had a wonderful, um, holiday season, whatever you were able to do. Um, hope you got lots of stitching done and I hope you have a wonderful rest of December, rest of 2020, and enjoy the new year that's coming up here in just a few days. So whatever you plan on doing, be safe, be, be well, and happy stitching. And Cinnamon says hi too. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's been really, one little kittyism here at the end. She has been loving laps lately. She's She's hunting people down to try to find laps. And if I'm not available, she's getting less and less picky and has been sitting on my kids' laps, which is kind of a new thing for her. So she, this morning even, I came back from the grocery store and she, she was sitting on my son's lap 
just chilling, taking a nap. So she is she is a very um, nap happy little kitty right now. <laughs> Maybe because it's winter and she wants to be warm. She also loves the sunspot, but if the sunspot sunspot's not available, she wants a lap. So anyway, <laughs> that's your cinnamon update for the day. Have a wonderful week. Bye.